welcome one and all to another exciting episode of Nerd Central. Grab your joy buzzers because this one is going to be electrifying. But all of this showmanship means nothing if we can't give you some great content, so I think it's time we kick it to the news of the week. Seeing that this is our celebration of Joker, it's only fitting that we open with the Birds of Prey and the fabulous emancipation of the one Harley Quinn. And boy are the DC fans split on this one. We've covered this subject a few times, but this is the first time we've had over a minute to analyze and deconstruct this movie. Everyone's biggest concerns can be summed up as none of these beloved characters are in their costumes. Black Canary just looks like a person, the Huntress is just in motorcycle gear, and probably the most egregious is Black Mask is not wearing a black mask! Not that we would ever want to cover up Ewan McGregor's face. But still, the character is named Black Mask for a reason. The other big concern with the film is that it looks a little too much like Suicide Squad for some people's liking. My take? Let's wait till the film comes out, then criticize where criticizing is necessary. Wait, is this seriously what I think this is? You're telling me that Avatar 2 is finally, actually, almost happening? Where is the proof? Oh wait! There is proof! We officially have set photos for Avatar 2. What's the big discovery this photo brings us? Um that they will be using real water, but CG fire? Uh -huh. All right, internet, start theorizing about what that could mean. Apparently, Avatar 2 will legitimately be releasing December 2021. How much would you pay for an ax that horrified a generation? How about $200,000? Recently, Jack Nicholson's ax from the famous Here's Johnny scene from the horror masterpiece The Shining was auctioned off for $200,000. Which, yeah, it would be cool to know that you own that specific axe, but at the end of the day, it just looks like any normal axe. And of course, nobody would ever know the difference. Well, Bailey is changing it up and watching a Batman movie for... Wait, what? Hush isn't a Batman movie? But Hush is the... Okay, fine. Let's take it to Bailey with Scary Movie 202. Hello, I'm Bailey Ramsier and welcome back to Scary Movie 202, where I'll be diving into different scary movies every week. This week we'll be looking at the 2016 film Hush. This movie is about Maddie, who is a deaf writer. She moved to the woods to live a more peaceful life. Little did she know she's going to have to fight for her life. After Maddie's neighbor, Sarah, stopped by, she started to clean up her mess from dinner. This is where we first meet our killer. Sarah is banging on the door, bleeding out, yelling for help, but Maddie obviously can't hear her. She then decided to work on the ending of her next novel when she got a FaceTime call from her sister asking how things are going, but her sister sees something in the background move, but Maddie just thought it was her cat. She then started to get texts from Sarah's phone of pictures of herself in her house. This is when Maddie sees the killer for the first time. She tries different strategies to escape the killer, but there was only one ending that would let her live. This movie was spooky. My heart was racing the whole time. I started watching this movie with my dad. We were 15 minutes into it with about an hour left. Then he made the comment of, seriously, he has an hour to try to kill her? All he has to do is break the windows and get in. Then he decided football was better to watch. This is why I don't watch movies with my dad. I also was curious about how this movie would play out. This movie was so simple, but it kept me on my toes. I love how the killer cut the power to her house, leaving it to where she can't hear or see. Maddie wrote on the door in lipstick saying that she didn't see his face and wouldn't tell anyone and that her boyfriend was coming home soon. This was really clever. I would have never thought of doing this, but it sucks because he took his mask off and told her how he knew. She didn't have a boyfriend from hearing her conversation with her sister. Maddie did some pretty dope things trying to save her life. One of my favorite parts is when she's climbing on the top of the roof and throws a flashing light into the woods so he would follow it. She tried to climb down but he had shot her in the leg with an arrow. This is where it gets good. She's waiting for him to put his crossbow on the roof so she can take it and she did because she's a strong independent woman. She also sets her car alarm off to distract him so she can go outside. Another part that was really good was when the neighbor John came over to see if she had seen Sam. Sarah. The killer was acting like a cop, but John knew that he was a lying sack of potatoes and was going to hit him with his rock until Maddie freaking banged on the door. Then he gets his throat slit. You would have thought she would have been smarter than that, but she's not. So what I didn't get from this movie was that he waited a long time to go outside. He seriously could have gone in at any time. He did go in after he was shot with an arrow. The part where Maddie is hiding in the bathroom is so spooky. He was in the bathtub and she didn't even know until he was talking and, and she felt his breath on her neck 
which was an amazing like part. The goosebumps on her neck, it was so good. She ended up stabbing him in the leg and ran to the kitchen where she had found the wasp spray and sprayed him in the eyes, which was so cool. She was not gonna give up. I love how this movie was just laid out. I'm giving this movie So she still didn't watch a movie about the famous Batman villain Hush? Okay, I, I think I get it now. Oh, we're back! Um, ha 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 ha! Thanks, Bailey. <laughs> One of the most highly regarded comedians in the industry is finally making his return to film with the much-awaited Coming to America 2. But that's not the one that we are here to talk about. Turns out that we have news of what the Eddie Murphy movie after that will be. Beverly Hills Cop 4 seems to be coming to a reality. There was an attempt to make this movie back in 2011, but it was quickly abandoned. Then there was talk of a TV reboot, and then returned to be being a movie in 2016. But now it seems that Eddie Murphy is serious this time. Why so serious, Mr. Murphy? Oh wow, that got dark fast. Um, Katie, we need you to start underrated like now. <laughs> Welcome to Sky High. Yeah! Welcome back to Underrated. I'm Katie, and this week I'm going to take you on a trip down memory lane by talking about Sky High. Sky High is about a high school student named Will Stronghold, but his high school isn't like most high schools. Not only is it in the sky, literally, but it's a superhero high school. Considering his parents are the most popular superheroes in the world, you'd think he would be excited to go to Sky High, but he is dreading it. Well, that's because he doesn't have a superpower, but Will's best friend Layla is going to high school with him. The only difference is she has a superpower. Her power is to manipulate plant life. As they are headed to school, they get bullied by two other students, Speed and Lash. Being bullied is not the way you want to start off your freshman year of high school, but Will and Layla go about their day by heading to their first class. This class decides whether you take classes for superheroes or for hero support. Now, since Will doesn't have a superpower, he immediately gets put into hero support. But this isn't as bad as he thinks because he meets a lot of really cool people. He also found out that his dad's old psychic is his professor. Then Will meets War and Peace. War and Peace happens to be the son of a man who Will's father put into jail. They break out into a fight in the school cafeteria where Will finds out that he actually has a superpower. And this power is super strength. His super strength impresses the popular girl, who then invites him into their clique. She has ulterior motives though, because she knows who Will's parents are, and she tricked him into throwing a party at his house so that way she could steal the pacifier. The pacifier is a mysterious weapon from the commander's office. Will realizes that she is evil and wants to ruin Sky High by getting rid of the gravity to make it fall back down to Earth. Will saves the school by flying below the school and using his super strength to push it back up to where it was, while his sidekicks turn on the gravity. Of course, the villain get arrested and Will and Layla live happily ever after. In my opinion, this is where people's love for superhero movies began. I mean, who can resist the thought of being able to go to a school thousands of feet above everyone else and find out that you have superpowers? Not only did I love the acting in this movie, but I love the actors as well. I mean, Kurt Russell and Kelly Preston as the superhero mom and dad is fantastic. I also really like that during this time, there wasn't many movies like this, especially on Disney Channel. Also, the fact that it's literally a flying school above everything else and it's called sky high is just a perfect play on words i also really enjoy some of these people's superpowers who would have thought of a superpower turning into a guinea pig or glowing in the dark or even making plants do whatever you tell them to i understand the normal oh i'm super strong or i can fly but these powers are so different and interesting it almost makes you remember their powers better than you remember the power of the people who are super strong and can fly so that brings us to finding out how good this Disney movie really was. On a scale of one to 10 Mickey Mouse ears, I've gotta give this one nine Mickey Mouse ears. Not only do I feel like this movie was way before its time, in a good way, but it also made people look at superhero movies in a different way, that it doesn't just have to be about action. I'll see you all next week for another blast from the past. I'm still upset they didn't make a sequel to that one, but thanks, Katie. It's time for a commercial break, but stay tuned or we'll have a parade with some weird Prince music.
Welcome back to Nerd Central, the show that is 100% dedicated to putting a smile on your face. Why do I keep doing that? Let's just get back to the news. A new Ryan Reynolds flick has landed on the radar. Michael Bay and the Merc with the Mouth are collaborating on a new Netflix original called Six Underground. The trailer was a bit misleading as the tag on the video clearly said comedy, but after viewing it, it looks like an over-the-top heist or a spy movie. It's really unclear which it is, but as long as Ryan Reynolds is involved, that typically means that we are on board. Six Underground lands on Netflix December 16th. Well, it seems it will be a dark couple of months if you're a wizard. Some of our own crew members may want to close their ears for this. Pottermore, the official Harry Potter website that sorts people into their proper Hogwarts houses, shares fun facts about the universe, and is J.K. Rowling's platform for changing the orientation and race of her characters, is shutting down. But don't worry, it's not permanent. The site is going to rebrand itself to coincide with a theme park and become wizardingworld.com. Now, before Cody has a brain aneurysm, let's take it to Roundtable Reviews where he can prove that his girlfriend is a real person and can finally watch the Joker movie. Take it away. I'm Cody Nance and welcome to Roundtable Review, the show within a show where I get an excuse to see a movie every week. I have a surprise for you all. She's real! <laughs> Long awaited guest of the show, the beautiful, the amazing Abby Mortz, my girlfriend. All right, so last night we saw Joker. And boy, oh boy, I was satisfied. But I'm a DC fan, so I was going to be satisfied regardless. So to even out the bias, that's why I brought on my Marvel girlfriend. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm real. All right, so what did you think of the movie? This is not a part of the DCEU, but I thought it was really good. I thought it was a good portrayal of him, and I really enjoyed the origin story of the craziness. Yeah, and this movie came in with like so much controversy surrounding it, and I think that's taking away from the film because the messages and things that this movie wants to talk about is so much deeper than oh it might might cause violence. It's telling it's a analysis of the mental health system in America. It's um, hey maybe if you see a guy having a bad day, don't just walk away. Say hi. Uh, how can I help you, man? Or even just, if you see a person with a problem, don't laugh at him. Like, just be a decent human is kind of the message of the movie. I mean, yeah, the only people Joker kills in the movie are people who made fun of him, abused him, used him for their own profit, like... It was so effective, because I was scared how much I was relating to him. Like he would kill a guy and then I'd be like, yeah, he kind of deserved that. Oh, I should not be celebrating this. Like, the movie is wanting to make you uncomfortable and there are several points where you find yourself relating to him and that's kind of the most uncomfortable thing about this film is how much sympathy you have for this guy. Yeah, but I mean, having sympathy for characters is a really big part, just like, from what I've had with acting, is like you really have to relate to characters no matter what. And I did not go into this movie thinking I would relate to the Joker. And I did a little, and yeah. I, I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is the this is the best movie I've seen in a very long time. Um, probably since Blade Runner 2049 was the last time I've been so impressed with an actual film. This this is my favorite movie this year. This is my favorite movie. I don't know. I, I will have to reevaluate my top five movies of all time after this. So, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10. Uh, let's take it over to Emma, see what kind of game she's going to get up to on Nerd Games. What is up, nerds and nerdettes? Welcome back to Nerd Games. My name is Emma Bjork, and this week we are playing Guess That Childhood Theme Song. My guests and I have compiled a list of classic theme songs from the early 2000s, and we're going to see who hears them better. This week I have special guest... Wes Ellington. <laughs> Five, four, three... That's like Carly, right? Hey! You probably put that on there too. I did. Yeah. 
I forgot it starts with the countdown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're gonna kick my butt. Oh, that's a tie! <laughs> no, I got more hand no. on it. It's impossible. Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Oh, come on. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2003 edition. Let's go. Come on now. That's such a... I've never... Mm-hmm. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's... No. Wait. Hey, um, I gotta make sure it's not Sweet Life on Day. Sweet Life is like Cody. First edition, 2004, 5, <laughs> something like that. Go-go. Spice. And everything nice. Powerpuff Girls. What's up? Oh. <laughs> Chemical X, you dig? <laughs> Oh, Justice League Unlimited. Not Justice League the first time, but Justice I, League Unlimited. I didn't da -da -da, watch superhero shows da -da 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 -da. as a kid. Should've put like the Bratz theme song on Don't there. do that, I love Bratz. You love Bratz? Mm-hmm. Oh, come Bratz. on, <laughs> it was already there. <laughs> you know, oh, that's the uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> so I, not I wasn't mess. ready for that one. It doesn't I'm always count. ready for it. <laughs> Water. Uh, oh, okay, question. Can we take it from each other? Yeah. She definitely just snagged it right from my grasp. I wrestled it from you twice now. <laughs> my hand is burning. And my, my fingertips have hit this thing. It's the last times. airbender. Uh, uh, oh, what? Oh, what? Come on. What? That's not fair. It's big time rash. She can't do I knew exactly what that was. She was, she had it in her hand, literally. Are we doing this now? <laughs> no, okay. no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a uh, fairly odd appearance. Timmy is an average kid that no one understands. <laughs> <Here> <gasps> <I am. laughs> I actually don't remember this, but I think I know. Because it's a show with the lead character is a white woman. <laughs> that's so vague. <laughs> it's not Hannah Montana, not Zoe 101. <laughs> ah, you got it. Victoria! Dang, I knew that. Oh. That's a uh, code name kid next door. The frozen, you put this on there, because I didn't put that in there. He's an American dragon, Jake Long. Oh! You got oh. seven? Oh, that's because she's cheating after the time. She's wrestling them away from me. because I cheated. You, you, I grabbed it and you're like, no. Sorry I'm stronger. All right, so Wes, thanks so much for coming. We had so much fun. Join me next week for a new nerd game. All right, notes have been taken. Never get in the way of Emma and a roll of tape, because wow, she's vicious with that stuff. All right, that's going to do it for me. We'll take a quick commercial break, but when we return, we will decide once and for all, until after this weekend, of course, decide who the best Joker of all time is. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Nerd Showdown, the part of Nerd Central where we battle it out on a particular subject that we have no business debating. To celebrate the release of the long-awaited Joker movie, today we're going to determine who is the best Joker. With me today I have Cody Nance. Cody, who is your Joker? I have chosen um, Mark Hamill from the animated series. Okay. And then I also have Abigail Martz. Abigail, who's your Joker? I'm chosen Heath Ledger from The Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Cody, start us off. Why is Mark Hamill the best? So yeah, uh, Mark Hamill is, without a doubt, the iconic Joker. Okay, you come up with the Joker laugh and Mark Hamill's the first one that comes to mind. You're, he, and throughout the whole entire animated series, he was consistently bettering Batman and being a menacing and funny part too. A lot of people forget the Joker is the Joker. He's supposed to be a crazy lunatic, but at the same time, he has to make a few jokes, right? Um, when you read the comics, you don't, read it as Ledger or Leto or anybody else. You read the comics as Mark Hamill and to the Batman extent you read them as uh, Kevin Conroy. 
so I think that that leads to why everybody gets gets excited when you hear, oh, Mark Hamill's doing another animated Batman movie, and then a good Joker is born. Okay, Abby, why is Heath Ledger the best? Okay, so I am a Marvel person. I don't, <laughs> I don't watch a lot of DC movies. I've started watching more because I feel like they're getting um, progressively better. But um, I really, really liked Heath Ledger as the Joker. I mean, it's what I saw when I was growing up and he terrified me. Like, he was amazing. Whenever someone tries to be, like, is playing a Joker, they look to Heath Ledger. They look at what he did. They emulate how method he got when, with his acting. I mean, like, he, his method was so intense that it killed him. He died for this role. He won an Oscar as this role. Whenever I think of the Joker, I picture Heath Ledger. Or I picture <laughs> Suicide Squad just because that's the most recent one I've seen. And, yeah. Cody. Why do you despise Heath Ledger? Yeah, Heath Ledger. Now, I, I'm not going to diss the man per se, but, but I have to. Um, he did do all those things, but he's not the Joker. Okay, uh, he has a plan despite saying otherwise in the film. He's like, oh, I'm a dog treating cars. That's the most hypocritical thing I've ever heard. Joker is not a hypocrite if he's anything. Uh, he has a plan. He has a contingency for if he gets arrested. He has a contingency for if Batman catches him. He has a contingency for if Harvey Dent turns himself in and says he's Batman, but he's not actually Batman. Who can predict that? But that's just the thing. Joker's supposed to be an agent of chaos. He's not supposed to have formulated plans. He's just supposed to be like, ha, 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 ha Batman died, bam, 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 bam. He's not supposed to be trying to topple economies in Italy or something like that. And that's, I just think Heath Ledger's gotten a bit overrated and like no offense to, to his death, but that's what got him the Oscar. Abby, why is Mark Hamill not good enough? Okay, so I would just like to point out that the only reason I know Mark Hamill is the voice of the Joker is because I'm dating you. I had no idea. I, as far as I knew, his acting career stopped with Star Wars. I don't know. I didn't know he did other things. When I think of Mark Hamill, you don't think of him as the Joker. You're like, oh yeah, Skywalker. And he, I don't know, like when he's doing the voice of the Joker, it doesn't, it doesn't stick with you. Like, God, Heath Ledger stays with you. His voice stays with you. And I just don't think Mark Hamill had that much of an impact with his voice acting work. Okay, everyone, closing arguments. Uh, well, to close out, I'd have to say, Mark Hamill's been in more Batman projects than any other actor. He's been playing the Joker for about 20 years now and really? yeah the, the animated series was like a I, mid to late 90s and so he's amazing and has consistently stayed the same Joker for 20 years and I think that's just commendable that an actor a well-known actor Luke Skywalker has dedicated that much time to voicing a children's cartoon I mean, Heath Ledger, he's an amazing actor. My first experience with him was in 10 Things I Hate About You. I just, he's amazing. He, his Joker just really sticks with you. I mean, the way he delivered his lines. Like, if you think about him playing the Joker, you can hear him in your head. He's, he has stayed with me with his portrayal of the Joker more than any other actor has. And he just, he devoted himself fully to the role. And 
I just think he did an amazing job. Those are some interesting arguments. I'm going to have to say that the winner is Mark Hamill. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Nerd Central. I know it's a bit unorthodox this week, but you should check out our past episodes on the KNWT YouTube page and also follow us on Facebook at Nerd Central or on Twitter at nerd underscore central underscore TV. Nermageddon is up next. We will see you guys next week with an all-new Nerd Central.